Hi, my name is Andrew Turner. I'm, just, I'm super excited to see some people here. I think we've talked about doing this for a long time while my slides are coming up. So I'm excited to be here tonight, and I hope everyone comes tomorrow to start sharing their ideas. Um, so I want to talk a story about what I've done, about how using these tools, I think Salim said it in the end, I just want to find out something, I want to do something, I don't really necessarily care what's going on underneath, and I'll talk a lot about how move to DC, work for GYQ, or a DC-based company, DC-founded company, and why I got excited about moving here. So in 1791, Pierre Charles Lafont worked with uh, George Washington to plan out the city of DC, and he took all the maps from all the other European cities around the world, and said, how can we make this both similar in understanding, but different? And these broad avenues with these gorgeous views down the way, it was a kind of a really brand new idea. And unfortunately, it didn't really happen the way you wanted, it took a long time. But if you actually go and look at like what this looks like on top of a current map of DC, it's actually turned out pretty accurate, even though it took another hundred years to do this. But he had these really great ideas of having across intersecting areas. And the nice thing about DC, interestingly enough, is that this you hear this phrase 10 miles square, and you, people look at the map going, well, what, what does that mean? Is it originally was actually a, a square box 10 miles between Maryland and Virginia that were given to formulate DC and Alexandria is down there a little bit, but it took a long time again for that to emerge. And sorry for my slide, but you'll see eventually about um, 1830s, uh, Alexandria wasn't doing so well, Congress couldn't pay attention to it, poor tax base, no one wanted to live there, so they eventually cut off Alexandria and said, eh, not, not a big loss. Probably today I think they'd argue that was a big mistake, possibly they could use that kind of money now. But there you are in terms of you know, how DC has actually come to, to shape itself now to um, what it looks like today. And you can see in the middle there, Pierre Charles Lafont's original plan. This is what it looked like from 1791, they built uh, the White House and they built the um, Capitol building and Pennsylvania Avenue and the mall, and that was about it. And there was like, almost nothing else going on for about another 100 years, and any second here my slide should change. Um, but, so it, it's amazing now how it's actually evolved and what actually happened. So to make it go forward. So I'm going to hit the button. This is way too much time. Um, so you can see it's, oh, it's fading away. Awesome. So cool. Um, <laughs> animation. Uh -huh. So as you see, this is, this is the DC you'll notice now, and you'll see on flags that are around the place, and you'll see on bumper stickers, no taxation, no representation kind of thing. This is what the DC we have today. So what happened in, actually, um, the late, uh, about 1900s was, um, an architect, an American Institute of Architects came and presented about the original Charles Lafont plan. This, um, Constitution Avenue was, a, was a, a big, supposed to be a canal, but it had trash and stuff in it. And they actually started thinking about, well, actually, let's revitalize the city, and that's when it kind of exploded. And so when we wanted to move to DC, we said, well, where can we live in DC? We don't live in this brand new area that was started around the 1900s area. So we went and pulled in Redfin data. Let's go take some of this open data on the web. I don't care what format it is, I just want to plot it on the map. So I pulled it all into GeoCommons, plot on the map by house price. Let me look at that. But I used to live in Detroit for a while, I got totally bored and tired of driving cars and long commutes, so I had to live on the orange line of the metro system, and maybe not in the orange line, but there's also this great system of called Capital Bike Share, where you can rent bikes um, for half an hour for free and ride them around. The funny thing about Capital Bike Share is they're great, except you know there's this golden moment of actually finding a bike at one of the docks. <laughs> it's great, so you awesome, I've, I've just got an Eastern Market, I found it. The problem is, is then docking that bike on the other side. This is typically what I look like now when I'm looking around DC, is, is these red X's are areas where there's no docks, so I can go ride my bike up. And I'll pull up to a dock and they'll say, oh cool, you know, but the docks are full, can you ride back to Eastern Market where you came from to put the bike back? It's like, oh, it's some great exercise. So okay, let's go back to looking around various house prices that you want to buy in these areas and somewhere close to the metro station. So I just want to filter down by house price and by bedrooms and then by possibly year build. I'd like some kind of old Victorian style house if possible. So let me see what's available in the area. So typical kind of ways to dive through data to see what that kind of looks like in the end. Um, and see, see what, where it is maybe next to Capital Bike Shares again and near um, metro stations. But I want to actually start some more questions, not just you know, near metro stations, but literally within a certain distance. I found about half a mile, maybe two thirds of a mile is a good distance. So in GeoCommons I went and did a quick analysis, did a, a buffer around every one of the metro stations to get a certain distance to go and find out, okay, here's the walking distance that are pretty good that I can you know, get to the metro and still catch it or, or come back at night you know, after a long day of work or at the bar. Um, and so see, see those distances on the map and, and quickly be able to visualize this. And then maybe send that off to my wife. And so my wife and I started collaborating around these maps and doing these two things together. And geeks we are, we actually started a blog so we could show this with our family members about houses we're looking at. So we started blogging about the walk scores um, on every block, the amount of things, the nearest metro stations, blogging photos, prices, things like that. And then our families could come in and rate them. And we mapped those back out, ratings by family. So going back to ratings by family against house prices, against walk score, and now pulling against metro locations and walkability distance and dog parks, and being able to pull those in, and now I actually want to filter it down and only see the couple houses that are relevant to me that we want to go and visit. Because again, I work, I work for a startup, we're very busy, I don't have much time, so I just need to see a few houses here and start diving in and looking at those specific houses, you know, get a, 
maybe get a realtor at some point, I don't know, they seem pretty irrelevant now, which is pretty amazing, and actually now go filter down by square footage. But also start looking at underlying demographics, DC has an awesome data catalog, start pulling in crime data, pulling in old WMS actually here, um, old streetcar locations, but that's old, so here are the proposed streetcar locations. So, you know, Metro Capital Bikes are now, but what eventually will I have when the streetcar trolleys are now being built in DC, how will that be nearby one of, those, one of those houses, both for usability as well as resellability of the house? So starting to do this personal analysis, again, send out to the family, what do you think? So, oh, we're gonna eat, we're gonna go drinking at, pull in the microbreweries, pull in the restaurants, buy health code violations, buy Yelp reviews. This data's all available, I can quickly, within a couple of minutes, all pull this data together and start making some complex decisions. There's a really nice house there between Stanton Park and Lincoln Park there. And in the end, we end up finding, finding this really nice three-story Victorian house. So this is the house we bought. So it was built in 1899 by an architect, um, Victorian-esque style. You know, a lot of workers had a lot of money, but had no actual money to pay for an architect. So they kind of said, let's throw a whole bunch of things on it. But so far, this has worked out well. But the overall story here about us personally finding a house was opening up tools and making them available for us to dive through all kinds of different tool uh, data to answer our own question, but what happens if we start applying these same tools and letting everyone collaborate around this? I can send this to the government, to Capital Bike Share, to the Metro, but what we're thinking. And, and, and she will share that information about pulling in climate data. So in the end, it's all, about open, it's all about open data and access to this information I can be able to pull it in. The tools to utilize this, that make sense to me as a user, pulling them on the web, on my mobile device, doing what I want with them. Be able to ask questions and, and analyze them relevant to me and then collaborate with other people to share consensus that my wife likes it and our dog likes it and my family likes it and then helping build communities. Now I'm living in this community, now I want to share this information. How can we improve our neighborhood? Where can we run a block party? Where should we go and promote for more capital bike share? What can we do to actually improve ourselves by now flipping around after the buying process, actually moving to building a better local area around us? So something I want to announce that's available today, we're officially announcing on Monday, but GeoCommons is opening up analysis for everybody. So anybody can go to GeoCommons now and do full spatial analysis for free through our workflow. Um, and be able to do whatever they want, share around with other people, those analyses, everything I've done here is free to do. And it's not just about the analysis we've built in, you can actually go program your own analyses. So functions, equations, taking your own knowledge and sharing it with the world, building widgets like you do data and maps, and sharing that with other people. So you want to do a return on investment calculator, if you want to do a, a, a walk score calculator, you can go program these in and share them out. So for everyone who lives in DC, thank you. I look forward to being neighbors with you and building more maps. <laughs>